The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. Hold on to your hats, folks. We're going to get a wild open the market trying to figure out where supply equals demand right now. We got the CPI, consumer price indexes for the consumer price index for the month of February. We just got them at 830 this morning. Got a little bit of a hot number in the market. Not quite sure what to do with that just yet. As you see the volatility, you get an initial spike lower. For a brief moment, you trade up to 52.21 on the S&Ps. We're now giving up about 20 points off of that pre-market session high. You're trading at 52.02. We're positive by 16 points right now. That's a positive net of about a third of a percent in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, you're right back to where you were prior to that number. You see the spike, lower, higher. We're right back to where you were before that number. Markets were already in the positive. NASDAQ 100, up by about half a percent. You get the Dow right now up by about 30 points. That's about tenth, uh, one tenth of a percent in the positive. And you get the Russell flat, Bitcoin hanging out near 73,000, crude 7748. You jump over to gold, we got some volatility in yields. We got some volatility in the dollar index. That's driving the gold action right now. You see the volatility across the board, man. Gold trading at 2170 right now, negative by $17 on the session. We jump to notes and bonds and check it out, right? So you get the initial thrust to lower price, higher yield, okay? The thinking being we got a hot inflation number. The Fed is gonna have to cut less to make sure we tame inflation. They're gonna have to keep interest rates higher to tame the inflation that is a little bit hotter and more persistent than the market may have anticipated. You have the 10-year trading to lower price and higher yield. You got the 10-year yield, 4.133, 4.13%. We were at about 4.1 yesterday at this time, so not a dramatic move, but the day is young and you see the market digesting this number. And then what happens, right? So we have lower price and higher yield. When you get a higher yield, people are going to chase the dollar in order to secure that yield because 10-year treasuries are only available if you purchase that 10-year treasury in U.S. dollars, right? So when you have a higher yield in a treasury, you're going to have more demand for what that treasury is denominated in, which is U.S. dollars. Therefore, you're seeing the dollar spike to higher price. More dollar strength on the idea that we might see a little bit higher yield, at least in the near term as we go forward. That is the reason why you get a gold pullback. Okay, now gold's chopping around, dollars chopping around, yields are chopping around. Market's been digesting this number for 39 minutes, and it is still not sure where we should go right now. There's your 10 year action. Okay, 111.12 right now, the 30 year, negative by 10 ticks, 121.03. We talked about the dollar, we jump over to the VIX, volatility index as this market charges higher. Looks like we suck out a lot of volatility premium. Market was a little bit worried about this number and maybe that's why you actually trade higher, right? We've seen the conundrum before in terms of, boy, there's a past life where if we get a hot inflation number and you got yield spiking higher, you would have seen this market tank. Not so much the case anymore. Maybe they were actually worried it might even be a little bit worse. Maybe they're not too worried about the fact that they think cuts are coming in two to three months regardless. Now the only question is whether we're getting two, three, four sometime this year or something like that. But as we've seen before, the first move is always not the move that carries. We get an opening bell in 20 minutes from right now. We've given up most of the gains you had up to 52.21 in the markets. And yeah, we will see where we go from there. And let's get into some of those numbers. Consumer prices. Rise 0.4% in February, 3.2% from a year ago. That's your headline number, okay? 0.4% and 3.2% a year ago. The monthly number was right in line. The annual number, slightly hot. They were looking for 3.1. Excluding food and energy, okay? You went up 0.4% on a month and 3.8% on the year. Both one-tenth of a percentage point higher than the market was looking for. I'm going to scroll down here just to give you a quick idea. This is the CPI. You have all items in the solid line. Come on, get off there. And then you have the dotted line being the core. 
Uh, that's sticky, folks. That is the definition of sticky, right near 4%. We got to get all the way down to 2%. The Fed is at a range of five and a quarter to 5.5%. So keeping that in mind, seems like they still might have the ability to cut at some point and make the case that they are still in a restrictive policy rate. Uh, nonetheless, it's a hot number, man. And when you get into it, it is a hot number indeed. And getting back to Bloomberg for a second here. All right, and getting into some of the numbers in terms of the analysis they had going on there. It was pretty close to even being 0.3. I want to get this exact number. It was like 0.358, which is why you get a 0.4% reading. So it was so close to being the number that they expected it to be. And I'll find that at the break as these numbers go pretty quickly here. Yeah, I'll find that exact one I was looking for at the break. But nonetheless, we got a hot number, man. We have yields rising. We have dollar strength. We have the gold contract pulling back. And we have the market giving up the gains that it had briefly for one time. Yeah as the trend seems to be, jumping around, keeping our eye on yields, because that's what you want to keep your eye on right now on CPI day, folks. You get a move, you get a move back, and we get a move. And just like that, the 10-year is now down about 14 ticks from where we were, and we have the 10-year yield approaching 4.14%. 4.14%, the yield on the 10-year. Yeah, and pretty remarkable when you jump around in terms of, yeah, check out Supercore, okay? And this is going to be the problem, man. Is that going to get me there? No, that's going to be a Bloomberg Terminal article. 4.3%, uh, a graphical look at the annual rate of super core inflation. Folks, you want it back to two. <laughs> we have some sticky things going on, to put it lightly, in this number. Yeah, super core, 0.4% on the month. Whew. It was at 0.85% in January, but that's not where the Fed is going to want it, man. Not even close. Food index was unchanged. Shelter and gas behind the increase, 60% of the monthly increase in the index, food and gas. That's why core is such a big different number. Yeah, we'll break down some of those numbers as we break in. Uh, but let's see how some of the Magnificent Seven are trading on that number. You got Apple shares slightly in the green right now, up about 25 pennies, biggest company in the world. Microsoft shares this morning up about $2 to 406.60. You jump over to Amazon shares this morning. Amazon up $2 to 173.35 with a positive market. You jump over to Meta shares. Meta, tough day yesterday as they're in the crosshairs of President Trump. Surprise, surprise. Nonetheless, Meta, they get back about $7 of that slide to 490.32 from Meta shares. We jump over to Tesla. Tesla up a bit as well to 178 and change from 177 and change yesterday. Let's see how some of the streamers, Netflix shares. Up a bit. We got positive prices across the board. The AI poster board, NVIDIA. There you go. That's going to be a lift. $17 to the upside to $875 from $857 for NVIDIA shares. And yeah, we'll go over some of the numbers, but how about Oracle, man? Oracle shares trading higher on their numbers. You talk about some numbers, man. They are going to open at all time highs. And kudos to our man, Mike from somewhere with the call yesterday, Mr. Eric O'Connell. Uh, hopefully, I didn't talk you out of that one. Boy, quite a pop higher. They're going to open right near all-time highs. Check it out. Oracle shares at 127.54. You're trading with a bid ask of 127.60 by 127.62. Uh, we'll see where that goes on the open as well. Markets in positive territory. We'll get into some of those CPI numbers when we get back, folks. Stay tuned. It's going to be an interesting show. Market digesting economic data. Inflation persisting. Yields rising. Dollar stronger. Market in positive territory. Gold pulling back a bit. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be back in three minutes. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. Again, the S&P futures up by 14 points right now, sitting at a right nice round number, 5,200. I was on the phone with our man Basil Chapman yesterday. Had a good conversation. How about these round numbers, right? 5,200 on the S&Ps. Can you hear me, Al? Okay, hopefully you can let me know what's going on now. Peace up by 14 right now. NASDAQ up by 72. We jump around and the information we want to get to here, you jump to the US CPI. And this is what I was talking about. When you jump to the core CPI, okay, the number that you're going to see out there, and this is important to note, rising 0.4% on the month, but you're looking at a number that is 0.358%. 0.358%, okay? So the headline number is 0.4% that you get, but they should really push these out three decimal points because, boy, you were pretty close to a 0.3% number. There's no reason why we always see the one-tenth percent, right? In terms of, come on, break it down to the hundredth, break it down to the thousandth. The number that they should show for core CPI is 0.358. The numbers you're going to see is a 0.4 number if it had come in at 0 0.3, what, 4, 4, 
you go down as in so close to a 3% number when you only round it to that one-tenth of a percent number. Nonetheless, the numbers do come in hot. Shelter prices nudged back down 0.4%. Overall services up 0.5%. But yeah, core services, okay? Services, excluding rent, for example, were up 0.6%. And the broader core services up 0.47%. That should inter, uh, be interrupted hawkishly. But thus far, has not been. So we'll see where the market takes these numbers and goes for it. Yeah. So super core came in at 0.47, right? Otherwise known as 0.5%, breaking down some of these numbers, 0.47% month over month from 0.7% in January. It is coming down, but super core services, folks, at half a percent is not where the Fed's going to be comfortable on the longer term. And it is remarkable how much information you get all at one time that you got to break down to. Yeah, girls' apparel. How about this one? I was listening to Bloomberg earlier this day. Um, the largest monthly increase increase in prices ever. Girls' apparel, six point eight percent. If you're out there buying girls' clothing, sorry to hear that. You're paying seven percent more than you paid last month. What? What is going on there, man? Just uh, remarkable in terms of this market and the price structure and the certain pockets that are exceeding. Inflation and driving some of the aspects of the headline numbers that we see consistently. Non-prescription drug prices, how about that? Soaring 9.3%, that's non-prescription. The biggest gain on record. Whew. Yeah. Now what they're talking about is you got more expensive items going over the counter versus being prescription. Yeah, insurance, we've talked about this one, man. Motor vehicle insurance, how about that? 20.6% from a year ago. I told the story here, man. I was paying, I think, 50% more on my insurance policy that just renewed a couple months ago. It was three, four months ago at this point. 50% more almost on my policy. And I shopped it around, and I got no luck. And that's not because of an accident or anything on my record, man. It was just straight up inflation. That's it going. And they got a problem, man, when you talk about inflation in motor vehicle insurance. So this one's interesting, okay? The core print was only 3.6% without rounding, and the components that drove the beat are likely to reverse in the future. This is an opinion, okay? Particularly air not airline fares, which were up 3.6% for the month, okay? PCE core should be below 0.3%, which means core PCE is slowly going to decline, over the next three months, setting the stage for potentially a June or July cut. That's an opinion that's, uh, let's see, Jay Hatfield, the founder of Infrastructure Capital Management. He's talking his own book there, okay? But there are components here, okay, where you take out a certain thing, you look at the actual components, you see where the market may go, you, you calculate how PCE, the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, is going to do versus the CPI that we just got. Yeah, nonetheless. Year-over-year -year core falls to 3.8% from 3.9, adjusted for core CPI. The real Fed funds rate increased to 1.7%. Yeah, compared with the Fed model estimate of the neutral rate of about 0.7%. The current policy stance is the most restrictive since 1989. Assuming the Fed's estimate for the neutral rate correctly, this leaves room for the central bank to cut rates. I think that is a very crucial fact to consider, okay? The neutral rate, the Fed funds rate, and then how restrictive you are from that correlation, that equation, you could say. Um, yeah, headline story, inflation top forecast for the second month in February as prices jump for used cars, air travel, clothes, reinforcing the Fed's cautious approach to cutting interest rates, and that is the write-up. That's your headline number. And from there, we see where we go. And we got the opening bell in less than five minutes, man. It's going to be an interesting one. Bitcoin sitting at 73,000. Gold contract pulling back. We got yields spiking higher. The 10-year, 111.10 right now. You're looking at a 10-year yield. Where are we sitting? 4.14%. Not a mammoth move, right? Not a mammoth move at all. Yesterday afternoon, we're sitting at 111.16. Right now, we're sitting at 111.11. Yields are slightly higher. 
right now. But it is interesting, right, that what do you have? You have yields slightly higher on inflation numbers. This isn't this isn't economic growth. This isn't jobs. This isn't GDT. Straight out consumer price index. Consumer prices. They're hotter than we thought, and the market is trading higher. That's one you got to get your head around, man. And what does that mean? Well, what that means is maybe the market isn't as freaked out anymore as it what once was. Maybe they think we're on the path, and maybe they're clinging to the fact that last point that I just made, okay, which was the point that they are in possibly, okay, and this is all, you know, the neutral rate is a guess, folks, okay? The neutral rate, the neutral real rate, it's an estimate. You can't do an equation because you don't know all the variables in real time. But if they're correct, then that would mean that the current policy stance is the most restrictive since 1989. So maybe even as the market digests these numbers, even as we get a little bit of a higher yield, what's happening? Market's saying that's okay. The rates are coming. They're coming down. They're coming down in June and July. If we're only debating one, two, or three months, it's coming down. It's a much different conversation in terms of when. Uh Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back.
back, folks. We've got markets open. You catch a little bit of a lift into the opening bell. s and is up by more than 20 points right now, trading at 5207. That's about four tenths percent in the positive. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 115 points, two thirds percent in the positive, 18,335. Dow up 111, 39,340. And we're like a percentage and a half away from 40,000 in the Dow. How about it? Russell in negative territory continues to underperform this relentless market to the upside. Russell negative by two points right now at 2,090. Bitcoin, according with all-time highs, just under 73,000. Crude price, 77.74 this morning on the opening bell. Gold trading lower as we have dollar strength this morning. You got gold down about $20 at 21.69. You jump over to yields. Your 10-year, you got lower price, higher yield. The 10-year sitting at about 4.14%. The yield on the 10-year, you're up to 103.06 for the dollar index right now. Yeah, let's we'll see where the day goes, man. Markets taking this in stride. We're up by 22 points right now. We jump around some other equities. Boeing shares down by 2.6%. Boy, you just got to roll your eyes, man. And uh, tragedy regardless. But yeah, the story out there, I couldn't believe it. When I'm seeing the stories, my friends are posting it. A tweet in uh, just my group chat. But yeah, you got a Boeing whistleblower who's literally in the middle of testifying in a trial and he's found dead. It's like this stuff. I mean, you talk about, we've all watched enough television, man, to say, really? In the heat of everything going on, uh, guy worked for Boeing for 32 years, retired in 2017. And some of the stuff that he was talking about is especially pertinent, okay? Uh, from 2010, he worked as a quality manager at a North Carolina plant making the 787 Dreamliner. In 2019, he, was, uh, he told the BBC that under pressure, workers had deliberately fitting substandard parts to aircraft on the production line. There were problems with the oxygen systems. He was alleging that one out of four potentially of the oxygen systems in the case of an emergency would not work, okay, if they were ever deployed in a real life emergency. This is on the 787. Uh, he also talked about that, yeah, the parts, that they were just literally using some parts, substandard fitting parts, I think was what he called them then. Yeah, he later told the BBC that workers had failed to follow procedures intended to track components through the factory, allowing defective components to go missing. Well, if you've been following along the story, man, the fact that they got doors popping out of the plane, and the fact they now have no records about that at all, and the fact the Justice Department has a grand jury going on, okay? They've convened a grand jury for a criminal investigation. Pretty wild. Um, we'll leave it at that. Unfortunate, nonetheless, and they are saying it was a self-inflicted wound. They're calling it suicide. Um, that's going to get some press folks, okay? And probably rightfully so. In the light of, of, I mean, either a, a, a large coincidence, but what do they say about coincidences, right? You can't help but raise your eyebrows, man. Um, and something like that. When you got a whistleblower talking about defective parts, you're talking about quality control, and you're, you got Boeing. Down another 2.9% today. We were talking about it yesterday. What did we say? Be careful of Boeing shares, right? It's a very ambiguous term to say, be careful. Be careful of Boeing shares, folks. You've got a long way that this thing could go. You back it up on a three-year weekly. 180 is the next stop. And if you trade below 180, you're on your way to 120. Maybe that's where this thing needs to go. As it seems like every single day you open up the, the headlines and Boeing's dealing with another story. And nonetheless, we get another one today. And this one, pretty much the most tantalizing, uh, one of the most tantalizing, if, if there's anything behind it. Man, we talked about quite a headline in the light of everything else going on. We jump over to Oracle shares on their strong numbers. And yeah, they really talked it up, man. Oracle shares, you trade down on the open to 124.60. You're trading at 127.26.91 right now. You're up by 11.14%. This thing chopping around right at all time highs, man. All-time highs, looks like we just eclipsed it on the open. We'll see if we can hold on to it. The all-time high for Oracle shares were 127.42. And we are just off that price point right now at 120. Yeah, it's, it's remarkable, man, in terms of, um, This is the Boeing story that had to do with over the weekend, right? This was the quote-unquote technical event that caused a LATAM plane to lurch downward fo um, to focus on software they're talking about now. That was the original thing, was the problem, right? That was the thing that, that had two planes crashing out of the sky, was software. You got 50 people injured, you got 10 people going to the hospital at least. Uh, and this is just uh, talking about that story. Yeah, 
The ceiling of the Boeing plane that suffered the incident was damaged. Look at that. Massive damage to this thing. They got problems, man. And then you got whistleblowers that are in quality control. Supposedly kill themselves as they're literally in the middle of testifying. Trial. Um, we could spend a whole hour talking about the complexities of that one, folks. All right, Southwest. They're going to reevaluate their 2024 guidance due to the Boeing challenges. Going, right? Even a a little pullback in the market right now. Boeing down 3.2. S&P's by just 10. Jump over the Southwest shares. There's a hit for you. Down 11.2% for Southwest. Um, they're looking for a loss in the first quarter. Fewer deliveries of the new aircraft this year and a loss in the first quarter is what they're talking about. Boeing has told Southwest that it should, should expect 46 deliveries this year, down from an expectation of 79. That's a big number, folks, right? Yeah. Um, Southwest said it's cutting its guidance for how much it flies this year and reorganizing, reorganizing schedules for the back half of the year because of the uncertainty around deliveries. So if you're in it, if you, I mean, imagine if you're the one buying these planes. You got two options, man. You got Boeing and you got Airbus, right? But boy, the companies that went with Boeing, they're really taking it on the gin right now. And that's going to have a lasting impact on Boeing, okay? These are headlines and brand. This this is going to stay with Boeing for a while when you talk about it. Look at this, Southwest down 12% right now. The market's giving it up, man. Market is giving it up. Yeah, market's not happy with the fact we're still got hot inflation, man. S&Ps are up by five, NASDAQ up by 19, Dow in the red, Russell in the red by 15 right now. And it's continuing. Look at gold down 25 bucks, but that's gonna be a factor of yields, of course. You get the 10 year spiking lower. Yeah, we get the 10 year yield now approaching 3.15% is where we're at on the 10 year, and we're gonna have some dollar strength to go along with that. Dollar up to 103.12 right now on that dollar. It's quite a run. All right, what else we got pulled up here? Yeah, we talked about CPI, talked about Boeing, talked about Oracle. Let's see what Oracle is. They're holding up pretty well. They had some gangbuster numbers, man. They did. That chart yesterday looked like they might be reaching the top of a trend, and they blow through that trend, man. They're up by 13%, up $15 to $129.20. They got a backlog of orders, and they're getting some upgrades accordingly when they come out with those strong numbers today as Oracle in that trade. They might be the next AI player, up by 13%, $129. 32 right now. All right, let's jump around to some of those bank stocks. Let's go over to Apple shares. Ooh, there's a haircut for you, man. Apple shares down 7 tenths percent. Even that's that 100 positive. Microsoft catch a lift by 1.2 percent. Amazon shares. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities. Subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Hopefully we got some audio issues resolved. Apologies. Didn't realize that was going on, but maybe we got it fixed. My producer can let me know. Maybe in the den you can let me know. Hopefully we got a little bit of clarity added to the situation of a market that's trying to find a little bit of clarity on the opening bell. We got the S&Ps right now up by about five points. You got a little bit of a rollover on the open there. And we got the S&Ps trading at 5190 right now. All right, jumping around to what else we have going on. So it is interesting when you look at, I mean, just the look at the front page of Bloomberg right now. When you look at the map, okay, of consumer prices, depending on where you are. Now, what does happen is shelter is such a huge component of the CPI, folks, okay? So you look at the areas where housing, shelter has been dramatically on the rise. And yes, CPI is going to be consistently a hot number. That's one of the reasons, actually, why the Fed prefers the PCE, because it more accurately represents what consumers spend their money on, whether you're the one putting money out of the pocket or somebody else's. Perfect example of that is healthcare costs. Many individuals, okay, don't pay for their own healthcare, yet they use it. You consume it. The personal consumption expenditure, the PCE, factors in healthcare much more dramatically, and because of that, it factors in other costs that are third party, basically, that you consume that you might not be directly paying for yourself, but it's built in to the inflation factors that drive this economy. Therefore, housing is less of a component. It's still a decent component, but less so than CPI. But it is interesting when you look at the map of the country like that in terms of where you are. And I've choked with friends occasionally, you know, being in Florida, okay, the numbers are running hotter in Florida. And I always make the joke that, man, you're in trouble. Yeah, if you're not a landowner, okay. But inflation, when you talk about shelter as a driving number, right? It's not as persistent when you look at like the rent equivalent numbers and stuff like that. It doesn't always come in. I mean, part of the component that's driving the CPI numbers so much in Florida is just the property values. And that's where you see people, whether you're taking, you know, home equity lines of credit out to do something, whether you're taking money out of your 401k, people just have more cash available in terms of their assets in some of those states, which is interesting. All right, we jump over to how the journal's putting it. We take a look at CPI. We continue that number on CPI. And yeah, so you're talking about 3.2%. The number I want to get down to here, because we've talked about a lot of these numbers, okay? Core was up 0.4%. You take a look at this number, 
keep your eye on the solid purple line because that's the one that the Fed is going to be paying attention to. The core is at 3.8 percent. You want to get back down to 2 percent. All right. But the most perplexing is at the end of this article. And this is talking about wages and prices changes from a year earlier. So this is a year over year number. OK, you have hourly. Let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger. Can I? Yeah, there we go. You got hourly earnings in the purple. You got weekly earnings in the blue, teal, we'll call it. And then you got the overall CPI in the black. If that's not the definition of sticky, what is, folks? Okay, you can't have the CPI stuck at 3%, weekly earnings stuck at 4%, and hourly earnings stuck above 4% in terms of year over year numbers and get back to 2%. Okay, we are in a sticky number right now, and it's gonna take longer than the market probably envisioned to get back to the 2% number. But that does not mean the Fed cannot start cutting in the next two to three months. It just might mean that their cutting schedule, okay, might be a little bit slower than the market maybe anticipated. And it's definitely going to be slower than the market anticipated at some of the heights. Remember when we were looking for like six or seven cuts this year? Not so much the case, right? To put it lightly and look at this market, man. Look at this market. S&P is now down by five. We just gave up 40 points from that spike high at 8.45 a.m. this morning. NASDAQ rolls over to negative 40 points, 18,175. Let's see how the biggest equities out there are trading. NVIDIA shares can't hold them down, man. Even NVIDIA is still in the positive. Now, NVIDIA is probably getting a little bit of a lift from Oracle, man, because the demand is through the roof. Oracle with this market gives up some of it. You're still up 11.8%. We jump over to Microsoft shares, still in the positive as well, up by about eight tenths. Amazon in the positive as well. Look at this. And what's negative in the NASDAQ 100 if you have Meta, Google, Apple, Amazon? Apple's in the negative, right? Apple's in the negative by seven tenths. Yeah, they're not as big of an AI player. Pretty remarkable. Let's jump back to the dollar index right now. Continued strength in the dollar index. Yeah, this market taking this in stride, man. So we get a Fed meeting eight days from right now, March 20th, the Federal Reserve. Uh, this is going to give them some caution, folks. Okay, we have persistent inflation. We have persistent inflation on the core side. We have persistent inflation on the super core side. And we have markets rolling over to negative price, still sitting at 51.82 in the S&Ps for some context here, quite a price tag. We are still more than 1,000 points of where you were in October to the higher side, folks, okay, for some context to put it lightly. But man, quite a reversal on those numbers. And we'll see where we go from there. All right, we'll jump around to some of the other equities I can't help but take a look at, man. Yeah, Bowen's continuing to drop. I mean, 176 is a no-brainer, man. You're at 184. You're down 4% today. It's like everywhere I look, there's, there's articles um, on Boeing. And I'm not even looking for them. They're just everywhere, okay? I mean, this one out here. The audit of the 737 MAX production reportedly found dozens of issues. Folks, these are planes that are supposed to be, like, infallible, okay? They passed 56 tests. They failed 33 of them. The auditor found that out of 89 product audits that were conducted, 56 tests is what they passed. That's a 56 out of 89. What is that? That's a D. Let's see. What is it? What's it going to give us? Let me get it exactly. Nonetheless, right? 56 out of 89 is what they passed. Yeah, that's a 63%. That's a D minus. I don't think you want Boeing getting a D minus when they test their, their, their facilities, man. And on the heels of you got a whistleblower dying, on the heels of you got a plane dropping out of the sky and injuring 50 people. Um, yeah. So during the six week, week audit, they also conducted 13 product audits on Spirit Aerosystems. Okay, that makes the fuselage for the 737 MAX. Of those, only six audits resulting in passing grades. I thought they're gonna be like, I mean, the public has a perception that they'd get hundreds, right? Something like that. Yeah. And the market's reacting accordingly. You're down by 3.7%. I would not touch Boeing right now, man. You can see how quickly this thing can trade down to 110 in a heartbeat. And it seems like they're in much more trouble right now than they were when this equity was down at 120. Because do you as an airline want to be the next Southwest relying on Boeing when you wake up and you tell the world that guess what, we're going to get almost half the planes we thought we were, we're going to have to cut schedules, we're going to have to pull back, we're going to have to lower our guidance, and shares go down 13% because of Boeing, because the deal they made with Boeing, relying on Boeing as a partner, 
And Bowen is uh, continuing to struggle, to put it lightly. Southwest down 13%. Yeah. We check in on some of the other airlines. JetBlue down about 5% right now. <laughs> Look at this, man. Delta down 2.2% right now. Yeah, it's not stopping, man. United Airlines down 42 Airlines in trouble no matter what it looks like. With the S&Ps down 151.83 in that market. Nvidia shares are in the positive. Pretty remarkable. Let's check in on Disney. Disney down about half a percent. We do have some Disney in my newsletter, folks. Uh, pushing highs yesterday on a little bit of a weak market. Nonetheless, Disney at 111.72. We jump over to Netflix shares as we come into this final break. Netflix shares down about half a percent. S&Ps are flat. One more segment, folks. We'll talk some equities. Don't go away. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got S&Ps up by five right now. NASDAQ up by 13. Can't help. Just watch Boeing continue to trade lower, man. Now you're off by 4.1%. You're off by $8. Boeing shares trading lower. We get back to the markets, though. S&Ps barely in the green. How about some volatility, man? Those are one-minute bars. Just to show you the spike we had this morning, the spike higher at 845. You trade right back down to 5180, which is within a few points of where you got at 830 right on that number. We're just off that price level at 5191. You jump over to the yields. 
Yeah, pretty similar action, right? Right back to the spike low. We're at 111.08. You're pushing 4.15% the yield on the 10-year. That's giving some strength to the dollar. You're at 103.10 right now on the dollar. And that's going to bring some toughness into the gold market. Gold down $23 at 21.65 right now for that gold contract. And taking a look, as I was talking about, okay, shelter and gasoline. We talked about shelter, and I was making the joke, right, that as an owner of a property in some of the states where property rises have risen the most dramatically, Florida, one of them, what you have happen in CPI, especially in CPI, okay, is that you have owner equivalent rent. It's a made up number, okay? I'm not paying rent as an owner. I'm paying my mortgage that I locked in that was at 3.75%. But if I had to pay owner equivalent rent, right, it's a theoretical number that is actually not there in reality, okay? Nonetheless, shelter and gasoline contributed over 60% of the overall monthly advance, right? Prices also picked up for used cars, apparel, girls apparel, 6.8%, insurance and airfares, okay? Now, shelter prices, the largest category within services climbed 0.4%, slowing down from a big month in January. The same was true for owner's equivalent rent. That's a subset of the shelter category, which is the largest individual component of the CPI, the shelter category, okay? The metric which tracks hypothetical rents paid by homeowners, right? Um, suggested a methodological, methodol, methodological adjustment was a large factor behind the robust reading in January. Rent of primary residence rose 0.5% the most since October. It's an interesting market. Look at this market. We're back up by 15. Stay tuned, folks. Basil Chapman's coming up next. We got a wild market. Stay tuned for Basil. Stay tuned for everybody else, folks. Have a great Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Thanks so much, everybody.